Welcome to University College Dublin. My name is Pavel Gladyshev and this is a video blog of the Digital Forensic Investigation Research Group. If you ever performed computer forensics, you probably know that Microsoft Windows Registry is an important source of forensic information. But like all forensic artifacts, it has to be interpreted with caution. One of our students, Ms. Jackie Fox, performed uh, a research into standard ways of interpreting some of the common forensic artifacts in Windows Registry, and she found some interesting results, which she's going to talk about today. Um, thank you very much, Pavel, for having me in today uh, to share some of my work with you. Um, I've just completed a dissertation on Windows Registry reporting, where I focused on the automating correlation and interpretation of the data. So today I wanted to give you a brief overview of that project and also I wanted to give you a sample of some of the observations I made uh, while doing the project, uh, particularly uh, in the areas of enum, mount points 2 and user assist. Um, to start with, I looked at uh, the way reporting is done on the registry today and that uh, is typically done uh, on an operating specific uh, level uh, and this is both with open source and commercial tools. Uh, the reports tend to work on a hive by hive basis so they report everything from the system hive, everything from the software hive and they also report the artifacts serially as found in the hive as opposed to maybe in the order in which they would be read. So I wanted to, to investigate and see how far could you take correlating that data and how high could you interpret that data. For instance, if an artifact was reported as a zero or one, but it might mean yes or no, I wanted to report yes or no rather than zero or one so that the examiner did not have to do um, that higher level interpretation themselves. Um, I started by identifying um, some common areas that people reported, uh, such as USB uh, information, system information, when the system was last switched on, uh, user-specific information about user-specific actions on the system, and also the network artifacts, uh, where uh, what networks a user has connected to and when they last connected to it. Um, I then went about doing a, a thorough search through the registry to identify um, the specific artifacts and I'm going to talk about one area, uh, USB, uh, just to give you a sample of what I did. Um, in this area I found 25 different artifacts in the registry or also some closely related files that I looked at. So I attempted to correlate, manipulate and report all these artifacts together. Now I'm going to switch to a slide now which is rather detailed um, and show you how these artifacts actually correlate with each other. So this slide here uh, starts off showing typically where you would start looking for an artifact uh, in, under the USB store key. Underneath this key you have uh, items showing the product and the vendor of each artifact and then each device will be listed with a serial number. This serial number is the hub of all the information that relates together. Um, there are different artifacts from different areas. You've got system hive artifacts, some from the software hive, some from the user hives, and then some from closely related files, for instance, setupapi.log, which has the first install time of a device. Um, I want to go through and show you some of the detail about how this correlation works um, and also how this is automated. Uh, so my next slide uh, shows you um, this key here, uh, the EMD management key. Uh, this is related to if you insert a USB device onto a system, the system will attempt to discover whether or not it could be used for cache. Um, and it will check how much space is on the system, what speed it runs at, and as a byproduct of this, it actually takes a record of the serial number of that volume. Um, this serial number is stored in standard numerical notation, and uh, I convert this to hexadecimal so that it can be used to go further and link it up to the link files on the system. 
uh, link files on the system have a, a volume serial number, both of the birth volume and also of its current volume. And so the, the last tested time can be used to find out whether any link files have been related to a specific USB device. Um, this obviously, if you've got numerous devices on a system and lots of link files on the system, is a very difficult task to undertake manually. Whereas if it's automated, it can come very quickly. I'd like to show you a sample report of this correlated information and how much information you can get about one device put together from the different hives. Here we have one device. Um, and we first thing we have is the serial number. Then we go on to say the names that we have from the registry. Now you'll notice that there are several uh, timestamps shown here. And these timestamps here are the first insertions since the last reboot. Um, a lot of work was done by Rob Lee in this area uh, from SANS, where he showed that uh, when you reboot a system, the first insertion will be recorded. However, if you're hibernating a system or sleeping a system, subsequent insertion and extraction will not be recorded. Um, the one that is typically used by most uh, software to report this value is the uh, from the enum tree. Um, but I have reported other uh, values because sometimes not all of these values will actually be recorded. Um, the vendor ID uh, is also taken from the registry. And again, I go on to uh, interpret this data further by looking up uh, the, US, the Linux USB org, where um, the actual vendor is related to this number. Uh, and I report this rather than relying on someone to look it up manually. We also report the drive letter. And you may also have volume names reported at this point, the volume GUID and the volume serial number and link files, which we've been through on the previous slides. The first install time here is taken from the setup API log file. Uh, we then also report which users have actually used the device. And often this is only one, but it can be reported as several. And I'd ask you to note here two things about this slide. One, this side note I've put on here about the time possibly not being device specific. And the second is that these three users all have the same timestamp for the last usage of the device. Now, onto some of the observations I made. As I was going through uh, checking the scripts that I was writing to see uh, what was happening, on, on a couple of occasions, my findings were not as expected. And uh, in relation to um, the enum tree, um, it is generally accepted that uh, with XP that uh, the time in here is the first insertion since the last reboot. However, when I was looking at my data, I could see that this was not always the case. So I decided to investigate it a little bit further. And I could see that the whole enum tree seemed to have some kind of periodic update going on where all the keys were being updated uh, with a specific timestamp. So I went about investigating this a little bit further. Just to point out that um, I actually was using some external test data while doing this. And I noted that uh, this particular set of test data here is from um, the digital corpora um, maintained by Simpson Garfinkel. And you can see that um, th there are two devices listed here, um, just starting in red, the two different serial numbers. And you'll note that the timestamps here for the first insertion since last reboot are actually the same for both devices. So this phenomena uh, was not just common to my own generated test data or my own systems. It's there in, in public uh, data. Um, so I went about trying to find out a little bit more about this event, what possible causes it could have, and uh, what uh, way I could record it happening. Um, so first of all, I used a product called Registry Decoder. And uh, I used this to go through and evaluate the enum trees for the hive samples that I had. One hive sample I had had 17,000 different keys in it. And within the enum tree, these had all been updated with the same timestamp of plus or minus 20 seconds all the way through. So I decided then I'd try and watch or observe or even trigger this event to see what was happening. 
Um, I used a product called USB DE View to do this and I set this monitoring on my own system while I was using it. Um, at one stage I actually witnessed the enum tree update occurring and I knew what I was doing on the system at the time and I was able to evaluate what other things were happening on the system at the time. So I knew that it was not something like um, a power saving event, a shutdown in the system, a restart, a hibernate, uh, it wasn't my antivirus software running, it wasn't a volume shadow being taken and it wasn't the insertion or extraction of a device and I was currently actually using uh, a USB keyboard and mouse on the system so I knew that it wasn't the USB shutting off or anything along those lines. So I observed further through several hives on different systems and the event seemed to be happening approximately every 24 hours of active usage. Um, I couldn't actually identify what was making the event happen, um, but I, I was uh, able to code into my scripts the recognition that this event had happened by looking through the enome tree and identifying when all the keys had a plus or minus 20 second occurrence within them. So all I was able to do was report when this uh, enum event had happened as opposed to why it was happening on a system. Um, I feel it's relevant to do this um, because uh, particularly in the Windows Vista and 7 environment, it seems to be prevalent across all hives that I looked at. And you could ask, why am I still reporting that key in my scripts? Well, the key is still valid, and the timestamp is still valid if the device was inserted post the enum event happening. The next observation I'd like to share with you is about mount points too. Um, when I was doing my tests on the system, uh, I noticed that on occasion, several users would have the same timestamp. Traditionally, uh, it's reported and commonly referenced that uh, if a user has an entry for a USB device in their user hive under mount points two, that this device can then be associated with that user. Um, the insertion of a USB device will update that user hive. And what I found is that the insertion of a USB device will update the user hives for all currently logged on users on a system. So a user who happens to be logged on in the background but has never accessed a device can actually have an entry in mount points two detailing a USB device that they have never used. Um, this will only happen on a system where fast user switching is used where instead of actually logging out of a system before a user goes away they switch um, this is very common on home systems, um, in a domain environment where the users are using, using XP, this is uh, disabled by default. Um, in a Windows 7 environment, uh, fast user switching in a domain environment is enabled by default. Often through system management people will disable it, um, but it, it can be enabled by choice. Some people will choose to enable fast user switching on their devices. If this occurrence has happened in the near past, it is quite obvious uh, when you look at uh, several hives on a system that probably only one user inserted if they all have the same timestamp. However, if it's happened in the distant past and one of the users has had subsequent usage of that USB device, it's not so obvious that the initial recording in one person's user hive uh, was related to somebody else using a device and not them. So my interpretation of this is that when looking at a system that you must look at all the user hives on a system and if there is evidence that multiple user hives have used a specific USB device then you must find other corroborating evidence to say that a user has actually used your device and that it wasn't just there by nature of the fact that the user was logged in while another user inserted the device. The last observation I'd like to share with you is on about Windows 7 User Assist. User Assist is uh, used by Microsoft to actually enhance the user experience by uh, allowing the start menu to include recently used applications both from the desktop and the explorer. 
And it's useful from a forensic perspective because it will tell us how often uh, an application has been used. And in an XP and Vista environment, uh, this counter uh, that's used starts at five and uh, anything underneath the five is normally some kind of focus as opposed to an actual usage of an application. Um, I translated this knowledge through to Windows 7 where it's known that the counter starts at one. And so when I looked at hives on a system that have been extracted chronologically over four separate months, I expected to see my usage count growing on applications. However, um, with one application that I'm showing you here on Notepad, this was not the case. Um, the application started at a number, went up, went down, and went down even further. Um, on Windows 7, it still records the usage count, it records a focus count, and it also records the last uh, time that something was used. It did not make sense that the device was going that, that the usage count was going down to zero. So I looked at it in further detail and I could see this was happening again across multiple hive sets. It appeared to be there was a persistent reset to zero going on around about a month end. Um, you'll notice that on the last value there in the second table, um, the last usage time has been retained. So I knew that the value was being reset to zero, even though it was still recorded that the device had been, or that the application had been used. Um, on studying this further, I could see it was typically around about a month end, but on studying it further again, I could see that if an application was in persistent use at the rollover of a month end, that it didn't set to zero, that it would keep climbing. Um, I'm currently doing further investigations on this so that I can actually predict when it will be set to zero and understand how that could happen. Um, I've set uh, a user hive going against two applications, one of which I'm going to keep using for a complete two month period and the other which I'm going to stop using after a fortnight and observe at what point it gets set to zero. Um, this is interesting because uh, we now know that we can look at an application usage more so than saying somebody used that 150 times when it could have all been two years ago. It's interesting because now you can see a pattern of usage and uh, particularly if you go back over volume shadows, you'll be able to pull out hives that could show possibly that somebody had a lot of usage on a, an application that's of interest to an examiner at a particular point in time or none whatsoever. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the end. Thank you very much for listening to me today. Um, I hope that this information was interesting to you. And if you've got any comments or if you're interested in any of the scripts that I've written or reading the dissertation, please feel free to get in contact with me. Thank you very much.